Hey guys, um, this is, I have two different scientists that I want to um, share with you um, who have estimated the position of Planet X. Um, the first one is uh, Robert Harrington and he estimated um, an, a position in 1988 and then the second one I'm going to show you is somebody who, a physicist who estimates where it will be December 21st, 2012. So first let me just show you this. Um, Robert Harrington was the astronomer who granted Zachariah Sitchin an interview, I think it was in the 70s or the 80s, and he worked um, at the Naval Observatory, which is a prestigious um, United States observatory. He wrote this article in 1988 and he estimated that um, Planet X, um, if it exists, would likely be found either in Scorpio or Taurus. And the reason um, that he said that, and I'll put a link below so you can go read this for yourself. He's using this equation right here, which this right here is um, what he's trying to find. And this is the vector of planet X or the possible planet X. It's the vector that um, that he's looking at Uranus and Neptune. So he's not taking into account all of the planets in the solar system. He's only taking into account Uranus and Neptune because those are the two planets that had perturbations, meaning they were pulled off course. So the vector, he, this is what he's trying to find. He's trying to try and find the vector, which is like if this is Uranus and right here, then if it's being pulled off of its orbit, which it was, Uranus and Neptune were both pulled off their orbits by a gravitational force. So this would be the vector that he's trying to find right here. He's trying to find out the angle in which Uranus and Neptune were pulled off course. So that's the reason why we have um, two different um, two different locations. We have Scorpio and Taurus and they're in opposite sides and the reason is because he was looking at two different planets. He was looking at um, he was looking at Uranus so you'd have to do this this equation for Uranus I guess I'm just I'm you know not an expert but I'm just saying I I think you would have to do this for both Uranus and then you'd have to do this equation again for for um, Neptune so then he would end up with two different possibilities either Scorpio or Taurus um, and I don't know all the details I did I did go through this article and it doesn't really go into extreme detail um, but anyway so that's what he had said and then I found that interesting because um, we know that the Egyptian hieroglyphs had shown um, Taurus right here. The bullhorns right here represent Taurus and this of course represents Orion and when we look um, at the solar system we can see Taurus is here and Orion is here. They're right next to each other so for some reason the Egyptian hieroglyphs um, had pointed out you know a large red, red planet seemingly here smaller in Orion and then larger in Taurus so close closer here maybe farther away here I don't know so that's interesting because Robert Harrington had also according to his equations had said that Taurus was a possibility for the location of this and then yet again in this last video that I uploaded we found coordinates right here that took us to an object that looked strikingly similar to the ancient drawings of the Sumerian planet Nibiru so I mean that's pretty I don't know I, d I don't know I don't know but we have to consider that as a possibility Taurus is a possibility for where this where um, planet X might might be there or might have been there in 1988 maybe it's no longer there maybe it's moved um, I mean, well, it probably has moved since 1988. The question is how far and um, in which direction did it go? Um, so, so that's what Robert Harrington had said. Okay, so then I want to share with you, um, probably a lot of you guys are familiar with um, Marshall Masters, um, the Yao books, 
guy, um, he he wrote a, a book um, several years ago with a Dutch physicist named Jaco van der Warp. And I'll just play a clip here of him talking about where they estimated that where Jaco had estimated Planet X was in 2009. Let me... We published our book, Planet X Forecast and 2012 Survival Guide, with an estimated orbit for Planet X through 2014. Prepared by Dutch physicist Jaco van der Warp, it shows Planet X approaching the core of our system from the south. We will present two slides prepared as an update for this report by Jaco van der Warp, showing where he estimates Planet X to be as of September 2009. Please note, I will be using the term astronomical unit, or AU for short. An astronomical unit is the approximate distance from the Earth to the Sun. For example, the Earth orbits the Sun at a distance of 1 AU. Jupiter, on the other hand, orbits the Sun at a distance of 5.2 AU. Or in other words, it is five times further away from the Sun than the Earth. Now, let's take a look at our first slide. In this slide, you can see the orbital path of Planet X, which is steeply inclined to the ecliptic. Yako currently estimates the distance between Planet X and the Sun to be 9.9 .9 astronomical units. Now, let's imagine we're standing on the South Pole. Here is slide number two. Here, we're looking above the horizon at an angle of approximately 60 degrees. And Planet X is in the constellation Pictor. Now okay. let's address the so, five um, reasons why we're not seeing Planet X this at this time. Let's go back to diagram here real quick. And, uh, Get go. We published our book, sorry. Planet 9.9. .9 okay, so you can see that um, Jupiter is here and Saturn is here, so if we go here, this is um, this is September 2009, when this is the date that he's talking about, and you can see the constellation Pictor is down here south of the ecliptic, Jupiter is here, and Saturn is here, so this is the angle that we're looking at it, and they're saying that um, Yako estimated that Planet X was down here and that it was moving up through the ecliptic and then up into the north. So it was coming from the south down here and then it was moving up past the ecliptic and then would end up in the north and then in 2012. Okay, so um, here is their next, this next video that was just recently put out by him. Um, and he's talking about this crop circle that appeared in Avebury, England, and I'm not sure what year it appeared, but this crop circle um, shows Dece the date December 21st, 2012, and I'll just show you real quick. You can see Mercury and Venus are here, and Earth is over here, so let me just show you. Um, and I don't know why this is. I'm not speculating about that. I just want to show you that, that it is that date. Because um, I don't really know much about crop circles and all that stuff. But you can see here's Venus and Mercury here and then Earth is over here just like it shows in the crop circle. Um, and then so Venus and Mercury and Earth. And then we have Mars over here. Um, so there's Mars. And then we have Jupiter and Saturn. And so here's Jupiter and Saturn. And keep in mind that these are different angles. I mean, this is a different angle of viewing than this other one. And then we have Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto right here. Oh, again, it's a different angle, but it's, you know, so it's different. Um, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So it's basically the same. I mean, it looks like it is depicting December 21st. 2012 um, and so what he's saying is that somehow this and he did publish a book on this and he says that this crop circle 
formation is telling us when Planet X will be visible. Okay, so let me just go ahead and play a clip here from this. This is because it is also obvious that the Avebury 2008 formation was like a cosmic message in a bottle. It washed up on the farmland of England with an urgent message to us for these times. That if you are standing in the fields of Avebury, England on December 21, 2012, look at the setting sun and then 45 degrees right, 45 degrees up, and there you go. You'll know the okay. worst is to come. So what he's saying is that if you're standing in Avebury, England, right here, which is um, near the 50th degree latitude, it's about 51, so... If you're if you're standing on the on the fiftieth degree latitude is basically what he's saying, so fifty degrees latitude. And if you're not at fifty degrees latitude, then you would have to, um, you know, you can download Stellarium, and um, and then plug in your location and account for the the. Um, the difference wherever you happen to be located but he's saying if you're standing at the 50th degree latitude looking at the setting sun and I've set Stellarium to London because it's basically in the same latitude he said if you're looking at the the setting sun so let's let's go back to the setting sun here um, and he said 45 degrees to the right so you can see these are in 10 degree increments so 10, 20, 30, 45, 45 degrees to the right, and then he said 45 degrees up. So 10, 20, 30, 45. So he's basically saying that on December 21st, 2012, Planet X will be visible in the constellation Hercules. Um, I would say possibly too if you give or take a couple of 10 couple 10 degrees difference possibly right here in Draco as well so I mean I guess what I'm saying is if you're going to go outside and and try to look to see if it becomes visible which I know I will um then one thing that you can do is is you can look for um the Big Dipper, which is right here, that's the one thing that I think a lot of people know. At least that's the one thing I know. Look for the Big Dipper, and then right above that, you'll see the, the that Draco's tail is right above that. And, um, and then you can follow it over here to Draco's head. So if I take this out, here's the Big Dipper right here. Here's Draco's tail goes up, and then you can maybe find Draco's head with these four stars, and then right below that is Hercules. Um, anyway, that's where he, that's where they're saying they estimate that it is based on Jaco van der Warp's estimation, and also um, the Avebury crop circle. I guess that's what they're saying. Um, but also. Um, I just wanted to point out that the Egyptians had also said, I mean, not only did they say that they seem to indicate that, you know, it was like this is Orion right here and this is Taurus. They seem to indicate that it was going to be visible in Taurus at some point. But they also, um, their pyramids, the shafts of their great pyramid aligned to Sirius and Orion in part of the year and then they also align to um, the Big Dipper and the constellation Draco in another. So I don't know what that's about, but all I'm saying is that if we want to see if the Mayans were right about this ninth planet becoming visible in 2013, then we should probably be looking in this area right here and also um, over in um, Taurus which is right here, Taurus, and um, 
and that's that's pretty much that so i'll let you guys go bye